Hi everybody, welcome back to Foss and Media. This channel is all about the Foss. In today's video, we're gonna go over MAC addresses and host names. What they are, why it's important to keep them safe, how to change them, and why you want to. We'll be using a tool called Mac Changer for today to change the MAC address, and host name CTL to change the host name. We'll first start off with MAC addresses, and then after we have those covered, we'll move on to host names. And if all goes well, we'll uh, write a script to automate all this for us. I'm thinking one script to hide the MAC address and change the host name, and another to revert the changes. All that being said, I'm just going to spend a few minutes here on some basics. I'll also leave a timestamps down below in the description if you'd like to skip ahead. And first up, we have MAC addresses. MAC stands for Media Access Control. This address identifies your device specifically and is physically burned into the interface card and cannot be changed, but it can be spoofed. An example of a MAC address would be right here. And take note that it has six different fields. The first three fields are for the manufacturer, and the last three fields are generated at random for your device. And keep in mind that if someone changes their MAC address to match yours, whatever actions they carry out online can be led right back to your device. And this type of attack is known as a DOS attack, which stands for denial of service. It is referred to as such because if someone is using their MAC address, sorry, if someone is using your MAC address and they unsuccessfully attempt to log into a server too many times, it's your device that will be blocked from connecting that network. And unfortunately, because these types of attacks are so simple to carry out, they are very common. Also, what we need to do to get your MAC address and host name would be to scan the network with a tool such as ARPSCAN when you're connected to it. Actually, while I'm thinking of it, maybe I'll just show you. And as you can see, there are all the uh, devices that are connected to my network. And unfortunately, I have to blur them all out, but they are there. MAC addresses, host names, and their IPs. There are also net network traffic sniffers such as Wireshark and TCP dump, which can also get this information just as easy. So keep your MAC address safe. This can be done by changing your MAC address before connecting to a public network. And we'll get into that in just a few minutes. It's probably also a good idea to change your host name at the same time as it also identifies your device. Tools that can be used to show your MAC address are ifconfig and IP address show, just to name a couple. I'll just run IF, ifconfig here quick to show you. And here's my MAC address right here. Sorry it's blurred out, but uh, for obvious reasons, yeah, I don't really want to expose it. And I can tell that's the device I'm using right now because it's the one that's been assigned the IP address. So yeah, that would be my device right there. And that's the MAC address that I'm using or that is currently assigned to that device. And as far as changing the MAC address goes, we can use MAC changer. Uh, maybe I'll just show you a, uh, the page for that right now. Uh, And Mock Changer is a great tool that comes with a lot of useful options. You can generate a new address for the same vendor or use a different one if you'd like the network to think they're using a completely different make a device. And you can also generate a completely random address or just create one out of thin air. All these things can be done manually too, of course, but Mac Changer just makes it that much easier. And as far as host names are concerned, They, uh, they should be changed before connecting to a public network if you prefer your network not to log your device's name. And this can easily be done with just com one command in the terminal or in the about device section in your settings. So if I open up the terminal, you can see mine right here, Asus Debian. 
These are human readable, human readable labels used to identify the system. Each computer in the domain will have its own host name, or each device, sorry, will have its own host name. And it's, typ it's typically assigned when you first set it up. You also want to keep this bit of information safe as well, but it's not nearly as important as your MAC address. As your MAC address is permanent, but your host name can easily be changed. So to recap, we can't change the MAC address, but it can be spoofed. And the host name is determined by the user of the, user of the device and not the manufacturer. To see your host name, the command host name can be used. As you can see mine right there, is used Debian. And to change the host name, I'm gonna wait till we get in the virtual machine to run it, but I believe this is the command you would use. And then the new host name. And that would be for non-system D users. If you are on system D, I believe the command would be uh, hostname CTL, set hostname. And then the new hostname. And that's if you're on system D. So maybe I'll just switch over to the virtual machine now and we can get started. And there it is. It's going to make it full screen. And before we get started, we should probably install some tools. I think a Mac changer to change the Mac address, uh, net tools for I have config and ARP scan. I'm not sure we're going to be using it in this tutorial, but I uh, just in case it's handy to have anyways. And if all goes well, we can quickly write a bash script uh, that will enable us to change the Mac address and host name and just one command. And if you're not familiar with scripting or just getting started, not to worry. It's uh, basically only going to be a list of commands that we'll be using in this tutorial saved as a file with a dot sh extension. That way, when you want to hide yourself in a public network, all you'll need to do is open up the terminal, uh, enter the name of the script, hit enter and you're done. Then the uh, same can be done to revert the system back to its original settings. And it should be a very uh, useful, easy tool to make. But anyways, with all that in mind, uh, let's get started installing the tools. So we do that with uh, net tools, Mac changer, and ARP scan. Uh, net tools, yep. Once you have all in there, just hit enter. Should be just about done. Perfect. Clear that out. So now that we have everything we need, we can uh, get started using Mac Changer. So to see the options, you can just run the help file. And there's the help file. And as we can see, we have a lot of options to choose from. We can uh, switch our address using the same vendor, switch our address using a different vendor, um, here we can print out the list of vendors. So if, say if you want to mimic another device specifically, like say an Apple device, uh, you can do that. And I think the most popular ones are the uh, dash R for random. And using that flag will just give us a random address, of course. And then dash P to change it back. And then all the rest are kind of just extras that are extra uh, features that are available to us. So I guess to start, we could just start or uh, go with the dash S flag to show the current Mac address. And we already did that with IF config, but uh, yeah, let's try Mac changer to do it too. So I'll just go Mac changer dash S. Oh, sorry. First we have to uh, find out which interface we're using. So you can use IF config for that. And this is the one that's getting the IP address. So that's the one I'm gonna copy. And 
clear this out. So now we just go Mac changer dash s and s three. And there's my Mac address. Yeah, sorry for it uh, being blurred out, but yeah, I just didn't want to really expose it. And I guess you'll have to take my word for it. But what you should be seeing is uh, a uh, string with six fields and each field is uh, two digits long. And when I change the Mac address, you'll be able to see that, just uh, not the original one. So yeah, I guess next we can uh, just try and change our Mac address using the dash R flag just to set a random address. And yep, so we can use that one right there. So I'm just gonna go Mac. Oh, and before um before we change the address, we actually have to use ifconfig to turn our uh, the network interface card off. Then we change the address and then we can turn the network interface card back on and we should be good. So to do that, yeah, just use ifconfig. Um, I have to use sudo. And our network interface. So mine is ENS3. Yours will probably be different. And down. And that'll turn it off. And you should see my network icon here disappear pretty soon up at the top. Yep. Now that's gone, we can change our MAC address to a random address. And to do that, you just go sudo uh, Mac changer dash R and your uh, interface. And what you have in there, just hit enter. That was quick. And there's our new MAC address. That one I can't show you, but yeah, the top two are my permanent address. This is my permanent address, so I'm going to leave that uh, blurred out. But yeah, that's how you'd uh, change your MAC address to a random address. And I guess we can also check with I have config. Oh, sorry, I forgot to bring up the Wi Fi card again. <laughs> that's why we can't see it in I have config. So to do that, I just go sudo I have config. Uh, ENS3 for me. Up. And you can see our. Uh, our uh, network icon is back. So now if we use I have config, yeah, there it is right there. And that is a different address. I guess you have to take my word for it, but yeah, it's definitely not my normal Mac address. Well, I guess now with that we've uh, changed to our random address, we can just change it back again to the, uh, to the permanent one. So I'll just clear this out. And Maybe. And to do that, we'd use the dash P flag for permanent. And that should give us our old address back. And like we did before, we have to turn off the Wi-Fi card. Um, just wait for my network icon to disappear. Yeah, now we're good. Now we can uh, change back to our permanent address. So sudo mac dash p this time. ENS3. Yep. And this one I can show you because that's the one we changed to. Um, but this is my permanent address so the, under a new Mac. So, yep, that successfully changed back to the permanent address. Yeah, so now I'll just bring up uh, bring up the Wi-Fi or the uh, internet interface card, and we can check with IF config. So sudo IF config uh, ENS three up. Yeah, and there's my icon back. So now we can check with IF config. Yep, and that's my normal permanent uh, MAC address right there. Yeah, sorry, you guys can't see it. Um, but yeah, that's what it used to be. And now that we change back to our uh, permanent address, uh, let's see what else we can do with Mac Changer. Uh, I 
I guess we have to check out the vendors list. So yeah, let's do that. Yeah, that's going to be a massive list. Yeah, it's freaking huge. You could tell by my uh, my scroll bar on the right. It's going to take us forever just to scroll through it. So yeah, maybe I'll just do that with less. Um, There we go, it's a bit better. Still a massive list. So yeah, if you wanted to um, mimic one of these devices, all you'd have to do is pull up this list. And then in Mac Changer, you would just use uh, these first three fields right here. And the um, when you go to change the Mac address and the network will think that's the device that you're using. And so let's do that. And I'm guessing this would be it right here, the dash M. Actually, I'm not guessing. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that's what it is. And we can just use this command and um, whatever vendor that we find in the list that we want to use, we can just substitute that here with these first three values. And that should be good. So to find a vendor, um, I guess we could just randomly pick one of the list. But I think for today, I'm going to try to uh, impersonate an Acer, maybe an Acer laptop or something. Um, so for that, we can just use the uh, command Mac changer uh, dash L. And then I want to grep it and look for Acer. Yeah, there we go. And if we use these first three fields here, uh, the network should think we're on an Acer laptop. So yeah, let's try that. So the first thing we'll have to do is bring down the Wi-Fi card again. So sudo if config uh, three down, and then the Mac changer command. Uh, dash M this time. And then we want to use first three fields right here for Acer. So I can copy that. Uh, paste that here. And then we have to add three more fields still. So I'm just going to pick these at random. Uh, say uh, B2, I guess. Doesn't matter. AE and B4. So yeah, now that when we enter this, it should change our MAC address to that. Um, oh shoot, we forgot the uh, interface. So just run that cart command again. Uh, ENS3. And there we go. The uh, Sorry, again, I can't show you the top two because that's my permanent address. But this is the one that was just changed to. And it says it's from Acer. So yeah, that's how you would um, uh, impersonate any other type of uh, manufacturer, and just by swapping out the MAC address, the first three, uh, the first three fields, because the last three are just generated at random for the device. But any network that sees this, those right there will think it's Nacer, and you can do that with any other manufacturer in that list. Yeah, so I guess right now I'll just bring the Wi-Fi car back up and we can check with IF config. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, and there's my network icon back in. So I'll clear that out for an IF config. And yeah, that's the Acer address right there. So that looks good. So I think now I'm just going to, I don't want to keep it as Acer. So I'm just going to switch it back to the permanent address. So sudo have config again. Uh, ENS3 down and sudo Mac changer and dash P for back to the permanent and ES3. 
And yep, there's my permanent address back again. And that's the Acer one that we just changed from. So now it's going to bring the Wi Fi card up. And I'll clear this out and check with IF config. And yep, there's my normal address back again. Yeah, and uh, as far as the other tools go, all right, I'm having trouble typing today. Um, there's a few other things we can do, um, but I think I'll just leave you to play with those. Um, you can do the same thing, but without changing your vendor, or you can change your vendor or set a random Mac of the same kind, different kind, all kinds of cool stuff. But yeah, I think that about does it for Mac addresses right now. And I think we're safe to move on to host names. And we'll revisit Mac uh, addresses again when we go to write our script. And that way we'll be able to change the Mac address and the host name in one command instead of um, having to do this all like on the fly. So yeah, let's just move on to host names then. So as far as uh, host names are concerned, we've uh, already gone over how to see your host name uh, just with this command. And that should work on both Windows and Linux. And to change the host name, um, you can use this, uh, use the host name CTL command if you're using systemd. I'll just show you the one first if you're not using systemd, but I think just about um, every Linux distribution these days is. But just in case you're not, I believe the, sorry, I'm just trying to remember. Yeah, sudo. Yeah, I think it's just sudo host name and then your new host name. And that's if you're not on systemd, but I am. So I'm gonna use the uh, um, host name CTL command. So sudo host name, CTL, set host name. And then whatever host or whatever name that you want to assign to your device. And for now, I'm just going to say new name. So after we run that and I run host name again, yep, you can see a new name right there. And take note too that the, uh, our prompt hasn't changed yet. That's our host name in the prompt. Um, so I'm just going to exit out of the terminal. Uh, fire it back up again and see if it changes. So I'll just do that now. I'll fire it back up again. And yep, there it is right there. New name. Just let me make that bigger. And I'll run host name again. Yeah, it looks good there. Uh, but I don't want to leave that uh, name for this device. So I'm just going to change it back. So we can choose host name. Uh, yeah, sudo host name CTL and box Debian is what I had it at before. That's my password and yep, box Debian. And like before, I'm just going to exit out of here and fire it back up again. Uh, yeah, looks like a change to me. So make this a bit bigger. And yep, just run the host name. Yep, back to normal. So now that we have everything working, we can uh, put it all into a script. Uh, like I was saying before, I'm thinking one script just to hide the MAC address and host name, and then another to change it back. And the uh, second script will be identical to the first with just the exception of changing the Mac changer command to use a dash P flag for permanent instead of the dash R flag for random. This way, if you're entering a uh, public network and you want to hide your hardware quick, all you have to do is enter a, uh, a single command, which will just be the name of the script, hit enter, and you're done. And the same goes for when you're leaving and want to revert the changes. So with all that out of the way, we can uh, finally get started scripting. And to be honest, I've already made these scripts. I was uh, going to wait until making this video to do it, 
but I actually needed them a few days ago. So yeah, I just couldn't wait. Um, but for now, I'll just switch over to them and explain what's going on. And then you can just easily make your own, I'm guessing in five to 10 minutes. Um, I'm almost sure you'll just, you'll be surprised at how simple it really is. Okay, so I'll, yeah, I'll just switch over to them now. And what you're looking at now is a script to hide the MAC address and host name. The uh, command should look familiar uh, because we just use them. And the only difference is that I gave my uh, poor old system here some time to nap and added some print statements to give us a play-by-play -play as the script is running. So yeah, starting at the, uh, the top here, we have the shebang. And all that does is um, tells the system where to execute the script from. And that is just the path to bash. And then below that, we just have a bunch of uh, print statements or in, uh, in bash should they be echo. And all this is doing is just displaying the name of the script. Uh, then below that, we uh, have the IF config command that we use to turn off the, the Wi-Fi interface with. Um, and then my system sleeps for a bit. Um, just prints out setting, setting a random MAC address. And this is just a blank line. I uh, just to give a little bit of space between the readouts. Uh, it takes another nap. Like I said, my machine's old and tired, so needs lots of time to sleep. Um, and then we have the Mac changer uh, command here to uh, change to a random address. And there's the interface, uh, network interface. And say like, if you were to copy this script from top to bottom and try to run it on your machine, the only thing that you would have to change is this right here. And, and whatever host name that you want to change to. But everything else would be the same. And then after that, it uh, sleeps for a bit again. And then this is the command that we used before to uh, bring our, our uh, network interface back up. Uh, some more sleeping, uh, some more printing, uh, more sleeping, more printing. <laughs> uh, and then here's where we change the host name. And this is the systemd command. And yeah, that's the one that we used to change the host name. So whatever host name that you want to change to would be right there. And that's it. So yeah, like I said before, the only difference between this one and this one, this is the one we're going to use to revert the changes. If I switch back and forth, you can see they're just about identical except for the print statements. And this dash P is a dash R when we try to hide it. And of course, the host name will be the permanent address too. The other that, these are exactly the same. So you could just copy and paste these and change the, um, the interface name and it'll be good to go. And you get that by using IF config like we did before. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you too, um, if you need to uh, find your uh, shebang, or your path to bash, uh, you can just go to a terminal and just type which bash. And there it is right there. Uh, user bin bash. I go back here. See, user bin bash. So I guess now we can uh, try running these. And to do that, I'm just going to go back to the other terminal here. Uh, clear this out. And for me, I can uh, run this uh, these scripts anywhere because I added a, a path in my bash RC. Uh, maybe I'll just show you that now. And this is the path right here. So yeah, if you want to run these from every anywhere, um, I would add this line into your bash RC. The only difference, of course, is your username will be different or end the path to wherever you have your scripts. But yeah, I just add that in your bash RC and you can run them from anywhere. That way, say you're pulling up to a, uh, a coffee shop and you wanna quickly run the scripts, you won't have to search through your files or directories on your computer. All you have to do is just open up the terminal and run it. Um, so yeah, that would be the route that I would take. But uh, 
in case you're not, and in case you don't do that, um, I'll just show you the normal way of doing it. So, and there they are right there. So as long as we're in this folder, we can run these scripts. Uh, the only difference is, actually, let me make this a little bit cleaner. Okay, so if we want to say run hide me, we just have to put the dot and forward slash in front of it. Um, and that just tells the, uh, the system that we want to run this script from the directory that we're currently in. Um, so yeah, just in case you don't want to edit your bash RC, you just have to do it this way. Uh, so to run this, I can just put that in there and then uh, the name of my script. Sorry, I'm having trouble talking today too for some reason. Um, yeah, just like that. And actually, maybe I'll run host first just to show you. See, box Debian. So we're going to change that. And I can just run the script. Oh, cross name, crossword. And let's let that do its thing. Hey, you can see my uh, network card just went off and on again. Address changed successfully. There's the new MAC address right there. Yeah, it looks good. And to double check, I'm just going to run uh, the MAC changer command. Make sure that's changed. Uh, 963D. So uh sorry what am i doing here uh dash s and do, 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 do. yep that's the one i changed to and my permanent one right here will be blurred out uh, at least it will be by the time i edit this video <laughs> and then if i run host name yeah see new new host name so yeah that looks good. And then if we want to change it back, uh, we can just run the show me and do that. Yeah, until I gave her a lot of time to sleep. I think I gave it that much though. So. But now we're gonna be busy today. And yep, there's my uh, new MAC address is back to the permanent one again. Yeah, reverting the host name. And after this is done, I'll just run host name again to make sure that it's back to my original. Yeah, and there we go. And then if I run host name, yep, box Debian. Exactly what we were hoping for. And I'll clear that. And maybe I'll just show you the uh, running the scripts then from my home directory. And the reason I can do this is uh, because I did add that uh, line to the bash RC. So right now, if I just do the host name command, uh, we can see it's my original host name. And then to run the script to hide me, I don't have to use the dot slash in there. I can just go uh, hide me dot sh. And then that way, if, um, like I was saying earlier, you don't have to make sure you're in the current or in the correct directory before you run it. Because if you're in a public place and there's, uh, say, lots of people walking around and stuff, it, it'd be really easy to get distracted. And if you're doing this type of stuff, when say someone's looking over your shoulder, they could accidentally see your host name or, or Mac address, who knows what. So yeah, it's just really nice to be able to do this quick on the fly. Um, so I'll make sure that worked. Yep. And I'll just change it back. Um, it's so much easier. This way we're changing our Mac address and our, uh, and our computer or our device's host name at the same time.
Definitely a convenient tool. Right. And you can modify this too in so many different ways. There's, um, you could say add inputs. So it asks you which um, uh, interface that you want to uh, change the host name on or, or the MAC address, sorry. Um, yeah, there's just a lot you could do with it. So uh, yeah, with all that, I think we have uh, host names and uh, MAC addresses covered. Uh, I think what I'll do is just pull up those two scripts again, um, put them side by side just so you can see them, uh, see them better. Uh, the only thing is I just can't do them on uh, this machine because I don't have uh, Terminator installed on this virtual machine. And that just allows you to um, split the terminal vertically so you'll be able to see them side by side. So I think what I'll do is I'll uh, just do that here and find out where I remember where I put that. Yeah, there we go. And so next time you want to uh, keep your devices hidden from a public network, you can just open up the terminal, uh, run the command, which will execute the first script that we wrote or uh, that we went through. And both your MAC address and host name should be hidden. And to set everything back to um, uh, it's original uh, settings. You can just run the second strip, script or uh, just restart your machine. And I think that's about it. Can't really think of anything else to mention. I uh, hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. And thanks for watching the video and checking out the channel. And I hope to see you on the next video. Bye for now.